Hi guys, happy Monday. Welcome to the drive at five from BeckyTims.com. And listen guys, I, I was asked a question, hey, my product's not selling on Amazon. What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? So I want to ask you, if you have a product that's selling on Amazon, that you have for sale on Amazon, and it's not selling, what would you do? Write in the comments and let me know what you would do. Hi, Gladys. Hi, Johnny. Thanks so much for joining. So, have you ever heard Kenny Rogers' song, You Gotta Know When to Hold Them and Know When to Fold Them, Know When to Walk Away and Know When to Run, The Gambler? Well, I want to talk to you about product life cycle. I know a lot of people don't talk about this, but this is one of the things, uh, well, I learned a couple of things when I was working on my MBA. One is the 4P marketing mix. It's the right product, the right price, the right place, and the right promotion. But the people that are contacting me didn't go through my 4P marketing mix. They just, uh, some, some people asked, I said, well, how did you pick this product? And they said, oh, it was only $4 a unit. So I thought I'd bring it to market. And I'm like, oh my gosh, really? Guys, you got to do your research. And that's why, I, that's the one thing that I'm kind of scared. Hey, Kimberly. Oh my gosh, Kimberly was my barista at the Starbucks in, I think it was Chicago. Good to see you. Okay, so, oh my gosh, my Saudi Arabian friend, Nikki. Amazing, good to see you. So listen, um, what I want to do is I want to tell you what to do when you your product's not selling on Amazon. So... If you didn't follow my 4P marketing mix, and if you just picked the product out of thin air, and my goodness, some of these products that you guys are sending me have tons and tons, I mean, have like a hundred pages of competition. I would never in a million years advise you to do that. And if you would have followed my 4P process, you would have known not to do that anyway. But I want to talk to you about what you would do. So with any type of product, there's a product life cycle. Of course, you have the introduction when you bring the product to market, and then you have your growth phase, and then you have when it's mature, and then it starts to decline. So depending on what part of the market that you're in, hi, Michael, you know, depends on what you're going to do with your product. So first of all, if you didn't do your product research correctly, you may have problems. Haste makes waste. One thing that I want to tell you in this private label world is don't be in a hurry, guys. You're putting your name, your brand on something. I mean, you're going to have, Hunter, I see you're on here. You're going to have a baby, right? That baby's going to take nine months to develop in, in your wife's belly. And your, your product, your private label product, this is your baby. This is something you don't want to rush through. You want to make sure that it's the best and you're going to put your name on it, right? And so that's what I want you to do with your private label product too. But let's say that for some reason you didn't, you didn't follow any training. You tried to do it all through YouTube or whatever. You just have a dud product and it's on Amazon and you want to know what do I do with it? Well, first of all, are you passionate about this product? Is it something that you can, you know, can you maintain it? Can you rejuvenate it in some type of way? Maybe you have, add different features to it, give it new uses, um, something that you can do to that effect, or hey Barb, that you wanna keep on selling the product, or maybe you just want to, you know, dispose of the product, liquidate it all together. So there's several ways. One, you can dispose the products right on Amazon for 15 cents per unit, or depending on what the product is and the category, you can have it returned to you for 50 cents per unit, and you can liquidate it maybe at local liquidation stores. You can look at liquidators.com online. Hey, Google is your friend. So depending on what, um, you know, Amazon marketplace that it's in, you can dispose of it right away through Amazon for 15 cents. You can even donate it to charity. That's another thing. You can have it sent back to you, donate it to Goodwill, write it off. Um, if it's a, you know, something that would be used, um, by everyday people. So those are just a few things that you can do. Also, you can have it sent back to you and sell it on eBay, sell it on your local Facebook marketplaces, sell it on Craigslist. Um, liquidate it, sell it to people that sell to flea markets 
And I know a lot of people are like, okay, Becky, well, I just want to get the money that I invested back in there. Okay, so if you've invested $4 an item and Amazon's, price, Amazon's fees are $4 an item, so that's $8 that you have invested, if you're not willing to lose that $8, I mean, it might be better for you to dispose of it at 15 cents each or to have it sent back to you at 50 cents each and donate it to a charity of your choice. These are decisions that you have to make. And one, hopefully you didn't go off and buy, you know, a thousand units or a container full. I would never tell you to do that. This is, this is the type of data-driven decisions that you need to make when you are looking at private label. And that's why I love to get on here and give you information about the drive at five, about private labeling your own item, about um, selling on Amazon, but if you just grab bits and pieces here and there, you're gonna run into problems, and I don't want that to happen to you. So for those of you that are just now joining, my name is Becky Timms. I am super passionate about helping you earn your first dime online, but you need to follow a system so that you don't end up with dud products. That's right, Val, data-driven decisions. That's what I make, I make data-driven decisions. And listen, um, tomorrow, I'm going to talk about SOPs or an SOI. Do you know what those are? Standard operating procedures or standard operating instructions is what we call them here in my laboratory. We have over 195 standard operating instructions that teach our chemist step by step by step how to do every procedure we have in our laboratory. And guess what? You need the exact same thing for your e-commerce business step by step by step. You need to create these standard operating procedures so that when you train your virtual assistants, when you train people to go out shopping for you to do retail arbitrage, or when you train people to do online arbitrage, you can give them your SOP, standard operating instructions, and tell them this is why we do it, this is how you do it, and it's just a beautiful thing. So. That's what I wanted to share tomorrow, so look for me tomorrow. We're going to talk about standard operating instructions or standard operating procedures in your business. It's a duplicatable system. It's something I highly recommend that you do in your business as well. Hope you all have an amazing, amazing Monday. If you like this video, share it. If, you, um, if you're watching me on YouTube, subscribe because I love to help you earn your first time online. And if this video is helpful, thumbs up, hearts. I'll see you on the next video. Bye.